rather than me uh, babble here, why don't I open it up to questions? We'll start with Chris Eisman. Hey, Greg. Hey, Chris. Um, I guess just with the quarterback competition, I mean, I know you said last week that it, you, you were tightening it. What have you seen since then, and, and what's kind of the next steps uh, you know, going forward here over the course of this week for what you've seen from those guys? Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're all doing a good job. Um, you know, we're starting to, when I say we kind of tighten it down a little bit, we're trying to distribute reps um, a little more uh, precisely as we get closer to game game week. But uh, it's definitely an ongoing competition. Um, again, without spring practice, without training camp, I just think it's true at so many positions, but, it, you know, it, it's obviously more heightened at the quarterback spot. We just haven't had enough time, right? I mean, we just, we have, you know, I'm a little more informed today than I was this time last week, right. um, but not a, not a ton more. I mean, we've had, we've had some practices. We've had two scrimmages. So the last two Saturdays we've scrimmaged and um, that certainly gives you some more insight. But I think, I think it's going to be, you know, because of the way things have unfolded, this is a different year, right? And it's different when you start as a head coach anyway, your first year and then throw this, this COVID and all the things that have gone along with it. We're just going to have to kind of play it by ear and, and really see how things develop. So I don't feel that heightened, you know, got to get it, got to get it done, got to get it done. We're just kind of going to let the string play out and however it plays out, that's how we'll play it. Thank you. Sure. Put a Bobby Darren. Sorry, Coach. I um, just wanted to ask about the opt-outs. Um, can you give us any clarity on which guys, uh, you know, wanted to opt out of the season? Well, why don't you why don't you be specific, Bobby? Who do you want to Who do you want to know about? I mean, you have a lot of guys off the roster. I mean, was there was there a ballpark figure of them? Um, you know, there's been so many personnel moves since we came. Uh, the true opt-outs like literally opting out and not choosing to play this year. Um, you know, Lonsdorf is one. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Wormley is one because, you know, he put an announcement out when he did it. Um, Matt Thomas is, a, is an opt-out. Um, there's been a lot of roster movement, so... Um, but those are the those are the ones I remember as, as opt outs, and I I may be forgetting. But there's been you know it's been a long a long off season, right? And there's been a lot of moving parts with quarantines and summer and our own team quarantine because of the outbreak. So there's there's been a lot of opportunities for guys to really um, evaluate what they want to do. And, and I'm comfortable now where we are with with the people that are on the roster. So now we got to figure out we have our team, and now now you know we got to form the team. And I, I think it is a team that's kind of being formed as we speak. Have a seat, Keith Sargent. Hey, Greg. Hey, Keith. How are you doing? Good. Uh, where are you at as far as uh, uh, potentially naming captains for the year? You know what? We've had some discussion as a staff. I have a large leadership group that I use, that I deal with a lot. Um, that'll narrow down. Will we go to game captains with being kind of the year it is? I'm not sure yet. That's uh, something that I've always gone, you know, when to vote for the captains. I never had a specific date. Some years we did it in the spring, you know, and other years we waited till halfway into the season. Um, in some years we waited to the end of the season. You know, I remember one year we had game captains and voted at the end of the season. And I don't know what it is, but as a coach, you just kind of feel when that is, when the time is right. So I'm not sure when that'll be, if it will, if it will be. But um, if we do vote for, you know, permanent captains, we'll certainly announce that. Brother Tom Canavan. Uh, hi, Greg. Um one quick question. I mean, I looked at the roster, and I didn't know that if you applied to the NFL, 
to be drafted and don't get drafted. I mean, Loomer is on the roster. I mean, how did that work out? Yeah, Tom, that's a, uh, an interesting turn of events, right? Um, I think part of it has to do with the COVID situation, right? So, like, if you look at Lumar's opportunities, it's unfortunate, but the Friday we were going on spring break, that was supposed to be our pro day. Well, that got canceled, right, because of the, of the COVID. And then a lot of the workout opportunities were canceled as a result so when the draft came and went and, and nothing happened for him, uh, he and I spoke again, and he had an interest in returning. Now, he and I spoke way back when I took the job, and uh, he had some very valid thoughts about why he should go to the NFL, which I didn't argue with him. I agreed. Um, so when it didn't work out, I was more than happy to try to see if we could do something. Um you know, Matt Potteroff, who handles uh, compliance here at Rutgers, he's in charge of it all, associate AD, really a very, very bright guy and very wired with the NCAA. And he, you know, he thought that maybe that would be an opportunity. But then we were going to wait and see because Ellen wasn't sure what he wanted to do. And in the interim, the punter at, um, where the heck was it? Um, Arizona State. It was Arizona State. Arizona State actually got a waiver from the NCAA and he did the same thing. He had declared for the draft, the whole deal. So we followed up and did our own waiver. Once Ellen felt that that's definitely what he wanted to do. And I'm really pleased that he's here. He's, he's, uh, he's a good, really good football player and he works very hard. So it's exciting, uh, for us to get, to get him back. Um, and the crazy thing, right. With this year being what it is, I mean, I, I'm not saying this could, ha this will or could happen, but, this year doesn't count in your eligibility clock, so he actually could be back in 21 if he chose to, right? So to say this year is weird is an understatement, but um, I think the more flexible you are, the more you're ready to pivot on a dime, depending on the day, the better the better you're going to do and the less it's going to, you know, make you crazy. So I've tried to do that as much as I can because nothing surprises me. I can tell you right now, this is, uh, has been one heck, of a, one heck of a year so far. James Krebs? Greg, I know you saw, obviously, Lonsdorf has opted out. Uh, what have you seen from your offensive line? Um, how do you feel about that unit? And but I can piggyback off what Chris said earlier. Would you play multiple quarterbacks this year, platoon them, given the, fa the strange year and the fact you haven't seen these guys much? Uh, first, the offensive line. Um, like every other position on our team, I think it's a work in progress. We have some guys that are that are really getting better. I think uh, Andy Orrick's doing a really good job developing the line. He and Scott Malone, and um, but we're we're we have some experience, but not a not a ton. Um, you know, Nick Crimmin would certainly be the the elder statesman there, and he's a real strong leader for us on the offensive line. Um, we've made some, you know. We moved Brendan Bordner over to the offensive line from the defensive line, so there's an, an addition to the unit. Uh, we have some new players that have come aboard, Cedric Pellion from junior college transfer. Uh, so we have we have a bunch of parts, and we're trying to figure out, like most other positions on the team right now, what's the best mix? You know, how do we get the best five on the field? And then do we have the opportunity to play six or seven? You know, does that help us, or is we want to ride with the best five the whole time. That's what we're trying to figure out. First off, who are they and at what positions? And then are there more than five that can play? So that's, you know, obviously there has to be more because if you have injuries, but that you want to play right off the bat. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to find out. You know, with the, with the quarterback deal um, in any position, really, we're going we're gonna to always do what gives us the best chance to win. So if that, I felt, was the best chance to win, we would do it. It's too early for me to even speculate on that. I, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But in this year, uh, you're right. There's a lot of uncertainty. Right? We just don't have enough data to make really informed decisions. So you go on your gut a little bit, and you know that you may have to. You may have to reverse them. You know, the, the whole thing that that I've learned over the years is you can't be afraid to make a decision, but then you can't be afraid to change it if you feel it wasn't the right one. And uh, I'm comfortable doing that. You know, early on, you say, well, I made this decision. I got to stick with it. No, that's not true. You make a decision with the information you have at the time. And if it's right, you stick with it. And if it 
you don't think it's right, you change it. So that's kind of where, where I am with all these personnel decisions. Again, with the limited amount of data and, and uh, repetitions that we have as a team. Ricky Schneider. Hey, Coach. So is there any status update on the waivers of some of the transfers coming in? And if there isn't, how much of a concern is that with, uh, I think it's 12 days out now? Yeah, um, we have a lot of that stuff's been taken care of. I kind of keep that in-house because, the, you know, the sensitivity, you never know. Um, you know, the human beings make those decisions. And I wouldn't, even if it risks it one one inch, I wouldn't ever risk someone's eligibility by making a statement. And, you know, somebody sitting in some office reads it and says, well, who does he think he is to, to assume this is going to happen or that's going to happen? So I, I really uh, will refrain from that, um, you know, not everybody has been cleared, and we're waiting on waiting on some. So we'll see how that goes. Appreciate it, Steve. Coach. Hey, Greg, how are you? Doing well, Steve. How are you? Good, thanks. Hey, what have you seen offensively from this team in these in these two scrimmages that gives you hope that this team will be, you know, better than what we saw the the previous three four years offensively? And, and what do you hope the identity of this team will be offensively? Well. I can't really comment on the past because I don't really know it as well as, as you guys do, but I can comment on, on what I, I think we will be. I think, you know, we're going to be fast and we need to be physical. And that's one of the things we're working on right now is, you know, to be fast, fast thinkers, fast players, fast everything, and and to, to be physical. If we can do those two things, and then we need to take care of the football. Right. Those are the three things that, that we're really emphasizing with our offense. Um, like everything else, I know I sound like a broken record, it's a work in progress, right? There's days that we come out and everybody looks on point and we're fast and we're moving quickly and communication is sharp uh, and we take care of the ball. Um, the physicality is, is back to uh, Cratch's question about the O-line. I mean, that's where physicality, the O and D line are where your, your physicality starts. And uh, we're working on that like crazy. But that also comes with some risk, right? The more that you work on that, those physical banging, uh, the more opportunity are guys to get to get bumped up. So it is it is really a, a balancing act there. But those would be the three things, uh, Steve, you know, fast, physical, and, and then we got to take care of the football. First back. Bruce, you're on mute. Hey, Greg. Um, you said your biggest opponent this year is the coronavirus pandemic. H how is your team responding to the challenge, and how would you describe your overall commitment to the protocols? How you doing, Bruce? How you doing, Greg? I'm doing well. Good to see you. Um, I think our guys are really doing a good job, uh, you know, adhering to the protocols. I think we've had our mishaps, you know, our slip-ups earlier in the summer. Um, I think we've learned how vulnerable you are if you don't stick to it to the T. All you gotta do is look around the country, right? You, you, you watch some college games, and I point out every, every opportunity I can. Every single day I speak to them about COVID. Um, you look at some of the college teams that played games this weekend with seven starters out, 15 players out, right? Then you look at the National Football League and, you know, facilities being shut down, games being postponed. And as I told our players, you know, there's no margin for error built into our schedule. You know, we have we have eight straight weeks and then the ninth week. So if we make a mistake, uh, you know, it could, it could actually cost us an opportunity to play one of those games. And they've worked so incredibly hard. You know, if you think about all that they've done, you know, I, I still remember seeing, you know, uh, whatever they're called tweets or whatever on, on the thing where guys lifting weights and guys in their garage with like sand buckets and we think about the commitment to try to get ready and then not to be able to once the season got reinstated not to be able to play games that would be a shame so I've really really impressed upon him the fact that uh, you know it's every single guy right? it only takes one guy to make a mistake and it affects everybody so if you really love your teammates uh, you need to you need to step up and do this, and it's the coaching staff, it's the support staff, it's everybody. Uh, the good thing is we're getting tested every single day, you know, with the Big Ten testing program. So 
we just keep you know talking about it, educating, and uh, I think you got to get a little lucky too. We have time for one more question. We'll go to Mike Pavlichko. Greg, how you doing? Doing well, Mike. How are you? Doing good. Um, I've got a new show I do Tuesday nights in our first big interview. We've got Eric Legrand coming up. In fact, I'm getting off uh, off of this and going to talk to him in a few minutes. I wanted to talk to you about him. I mean, obviously, you guys have stayed close over the years for obvious reasons. Um, I'm sure one of the unwritten perks of coming back to New Jersey would be that you'd be close to him. How difficult has it been? I'm assuming that you haven't seen him. I know he hasn't you know, been out a lot because he, he's in a vulnerable uh, situation in terms of COVID. But what's that been like? And, and you know, how has it been you getting to talk to him over the last several months? No, it's been great. Um, you know, I think I told this story early on when I took the job is the night that I came back, I don't know what it was, a week or two before I accepted the job. Christy and I kind of drove around, and then she had to, she was going to one of her friend's houses for a get-together. So I had a couple hours to kill, um, and I just surprised him and went over to the house. This is all pre-COVID, obviously, and uh, it was great just visiting with him and being able to see him until this, this thing hit was, was really fun. Um, He's such a special guy. He's such a special person to me and to my family. And I think to all of us, right? All of us have had the opportunity to be around him. Um, if we all could have such a positive outlook on life and, and bring that attitude every day, uh, the world would be a better place. So I look to him as uh, an inspiration like so many people do. And, uh, you know, now that he's a 30-something guy, he, he's actually really a, a good friend, too, which is kind of cool, right? When your ex-players start to become your friends and, you you know, we look at each other as, as contemporaries, that's fun. So uh, I've enjoyed that as well. Thanks, Greg. Right. Appreciate it. Guys, really uh, appreciate you and your patience with the roster and everything. I know that uh, it's not the easiest thing when you don't have that. I do appreciate it. And next week, we'll get you the depth and that should clear up some of the issues on guys with eligibility and things because by then we have to lock and load and have our guys that uh, we're getting ready to prepare for game week. But uh, I will catch up with you guys next Monday. Appreciate you. Thanks, Coach.